Four young children watched helplessly as it twisted out of control. I saw the Lancaster coming over the town and then the wings were literally going wingtip right the way down and right over to the other side, right the way down. After years of nightmares, Norman Smith decided to investigate further. But he was so incensed when he saw the accident report, which blamed the pilot's error of judgment and not mechanical failure, that he asked the MOD to set the record straight on behalf of the crew who died. They must have relations, or they might have relations, who will come along and ask for the crash card, and if it's a relation to the pilot, they will get pilot error. Now, how do you think they would feel reading that? Today, the group returned to the field where they'd hurried that fateful night. Norman Smith. Hello, Ralph. You've done all this work. Yeah. Brother, Fabulous. Brother, brother the they were joined by the brother of the navigator who died. I'm very impressed with what Norman's done. It wasn't my brother's fault. It, they're saying it's pilot error. And having looked at this, he could be... <laughs> just couldn't be... The Ministry of Defence says it can't rewrite history. The original Court of Inquiry records were destroyed in the 1960s. But the Queen Mother has asked Defence Secretary George Robertson to investigate. A plaque will now be put up in Greenstead Church near Onga in memory of those who died. Karen Ainley, Look East, Essex. Very sad story there. A Cambridge University college has broken with centuries of tradition by appointing a rather unusual replacement for the official college cat. The new feline at Queen's College has four legs and a tail, as you'd expect. But rather than meow, the official cat barks. In the hallowed courts of Queen's College, dogs have been banned since 1595. No bark has ever echoed along these historic cloisters. Here, kitty, kitty. But there is an official college cat, and here she is. Sprite, as you can see, is actually a dog, but now she's been made an honorary cat. Barking mad, you might say. How can a dog possibly become a cat? Well, it's uh, just by definition. I mean, if you have a sufficient uh, authority within the college, you can always define something to be what it is. And we have May Week in June, so why can't we have a, a dog that's called a cat? Oh, college cat. Oh, look, there's the Queen's cat. Sprite became a local celebrity when her owner, the Bursa secretary, sneaked her in as a puppy. She proved so popular that the authorities decided to circumvent the college ban to keep her from the doghouse. She is wondering what all this attention's about. Does she know she's a cat? Uh, I don't think she does, no. She's not very fond of cats. And Sprite has some very unfeline tendencies, like chasing squirrels although she does mistake herself for a cat sometimes when she attempts to climb trees. Now, if ever there was an animal with an identity crisis, it has to be Sprite. So we decided to put her to the taste test. Does she think she's really a cat or a dog? And now the moment of truth. No, there's no doubt about it. She definitely thinks she's a dog. Or does she? No, the cat food is definitely off the menu, which only goes to prove that 8 out of 10 honorary cat owners said their feline preferred dog food. <laughs> what a lovely dog there. Or should I say cat? I don't know. We're well, efficient to compete in today's markets. We make to the same tank at two manufacturing uh, plants, and that really isn't efficient today. Having made the decision that we need to consolidate our manufacturing onto one plant, we had to decide whether it was Leeds or Newcastle. The decision to scrap challenger production in Leeds rather than Newcastle was purely a business one, say the company. The Vickers Axe fell the day after Tony Blair was in the northeast, trying to rally spirits after a series of major job losses there. We were relieved that uh, Newcastle was the plant that was going to stay open, tinged with sadness that uh, our colleagues down at Leeds were obviously in a whole different ball game than what we were and that they were going to lose their jobs. But Vickers workers in Leeds believe their jobs were sacrificed to spare more misery on Tyneside. Very political, isn't it? You think so? Obviously. Well, it's interesting in Newcastle, isn't it? Can't win. Very surprised. They all thought Newcastle were going to go down, or at least split 50-50 with redundancies. A severe shortage of orders has followed the passing of the Cold War, the so-called peace dividend. 
an industry vigorously promoted by Margaret Thatcher in the 80s, has had to adjust to new realities.